Today we're going to talk about the properties of common functional groups. So let's begin our discussion with alkanes. Alkanes are hydrocarbons. Their compounds compose completely of carbon and hydrogen. A good example of this is pentane, C5H12. Another one is ethane. Ethane has two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms. So this is C2H6. Alkanes are saturated molecules. As you can see, there's no pi bonds, there's no double bond, there's no triple bond. Therefore, alkanes are unreactive towards addition reactions, reactions with hydrogen gas. Alkenes, on the other hand, they can react with hydrogen gas in the presence of a catalyst. So like alkanes, alkenes are hydrocarbons, but the only difference is that they have at least one double bond. So in the case of ethene, ethene looks like this. By introducing one double bond to the structure, we need to remove two hydrogen atoms. Alkanes, they're saturated compounds. They're filled to the max with hydrogen atoms. Alkenes and alkynes, they're unsaturated, which means you can add hydrogen atoms to them. So these molecules, they can react with hydrogen gas. And this will turn ethene into ethane. Now, both alkanes and alkenes, they're insoluble in water. They don't dissolve in water. If you were to put an alkane with water, what's going to happen is you're going to have two layers. Water has a higher density than most hydrocarbons. So it would look something like this. In a liquid form, this would be the alkane and underneath it will be water. So hydrocarbons like alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, they don't mix with water. They don't dissolve in water. But they do have a lower density than water. Water has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. And a typical alkane has a density of around 0.6 to 0.7 grams per cubic centimeters. So that's why they float on water, because they have a lower density than water. Now let's talk about alkynes. So alkynes are similar to alkanes and alkenes in that they're insoluble in water. They also have a low density. And all three of these functional groups have a low boiling point. But the difference between an alkyne relative to an alkane or an alkene is that an alkyne has a triple bond. So it has two pi bonds. A double bond has one pi bond, a triple bond has two pi bonds. But just like the other two, they're nonpolar. Alkynes are insoluble in water and they also have a low density. So they too will float on water as well. Next up, alcohols. So this functional group is pretty common in organic chemistry. So whenever you see an OH group, you're dealing with an alcohol. Examples include ethanol. This is one propanol. That is one butanol. Alcohols have rel relatively high boiling points compared to alkanes. The boiling point for ethanol is 78 degrees Celsius. If we were to compare that to the boiling point of ethane, this is negative 98 degrees Celsius. So alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, 
as long as they don't have any other functional groups, they have a relatively low boiling point. Alcohols have a higher boiling point than alkanes. The reason for this is because of the OH group. Whenever hydrogen is attached to the elements like oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine, you're going to have a special case of bonding known as hydrogen bonds. So due to hydrogen bonding, that's why alcohols have a relatively high boiling point. Now, alcohols for the most part are soluble in water, but it really depends on the length of the hydrocarbon chain. So alcohols with a low number of carbon atoms, for the most part, they're soluble in water. But if you have, let's say something like one octanol, this is going to have a low solubility in water. Whereas ethanol is highly soluble in water. The OH part of the molecule is the hydrophilic region. That's the part that is polar and that's the part that is attracted to water. The hydrocarbon tail, this is the nonpolar region of one octanol. This is the part that does not like to mix with water. And so based on the length of this hydrocarbon tail, that's going to determine if the alcohol is soluble or insoluble in water. So for the most part, alcohols with four carbons or less will typically be highly soluble in water. Alcohols with like six or more carbons, they're not that soluble in water. The solubility decreases as you add more and more carbon atoms to the hydrocarbon chain. Next we have ethers. So here is the typical functional group of an ether. It's basically an oxygen atom sandwiched between two carbon atoms. Now ethers have a similar molecular geometry to water. The molecular geometry of water, it has a bent shape with an angle of about 104.5. Ethers are very similar. Like water, they have that bent shape as well with a similar bond angle. The oxygen atom is sp3 hybridized. Now water is highly polar and water has hydrogen bonds. The ether, it doesn't have an OH group. So it doesn't have hydrogen bonds in the case of water or an alcohol. But it does have dipole-dipole interactions. So as a result, ethers are relatively polar. But they also have two nonpolar R groups. Now, ethers are typically used as organic solvents because they're polar. You know, they could dissolve polar compounds and they also have like a nonpolar region. So they can also dissolve nonpolar compounds as well. Diethyl ether is a very common solvent used in organic reactions. Another one is THF, tetrahydrofuran. That too is used as an organic solvent. Another one that you'll see as you continue your studies in organic chemistry is something known as a crown ether. Crown ethers are used to solvate metal cations. So this crown ether, it's 12 crown 4. It contains 12 atoms, 4 oxygen atoms. It's used to solvate the lithium cation. The 15 crown 5 ether is used to solvate the sodium ion. And the 18 crown 6 ether can solvate the potassium ion. Now, ethers, for the most part, they're fairly unreactive in neutral conditions and if you're using strong bases 
in as a reagent. So ethers are typically used for Grignard reagents, where you know you're dealing with alkaline solutions. Now the next functional group we're going to talk about is the aldehyde, and we'll also talk about ketones as well. So aldehydes and ketones, they both contain a carbonyl functional group. The ketone has two R groups next to the carbonyl functional group. The aldehyde has at least one hydrogen attached to the carbonyl functional group. Both aldehydes and ketones, they can act as electrophiles. The carbonyl group can accept a pair of, of electrons. Alcohols, they tend to behave as nucleophiles. A typical ketone that you'll see is acetone. So acetone is used as a solvent and it's also found in nail polish remover. Now, unlike alkanes, aldehydes and ketones, they're somewhat polar. The carbonyl group is a polar functional group. And so aldehydes and ketones with a relatively no low number of carbon atoms, they tend to be soluble in water. So acetone is soluble in water. But if you were to add more carbons, this would be less soluble in water. The boiling point for acetone is 56. So aldehydes and ketones, they have a higher boiling point than alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, which usually have like the lowest boiling points out of the most common organic molecules that are out there. Now let's talk about esters. And let's compare it to carboxylic acids. So this is the typical functional group of a carboxylic acid. It has a carbonyl functional group and a hydroxyl group. So because carboxylic acids have hydrogen bonds, they tend to have a high boiling point. The boiling point of acetic acid is 118 degrees Celsius. If we were to compare that to the boiling point of ethanol, which is only 78 degrees Celsius. So because of hydrogen bonds, carboxylic acids, they have a high boiling point. And the reason for this is the dimer that they can form. Let me draw this a little bit better. So here we have a hydrogen bond interaction between the hydrogen of one molecule and the oxygen of another. And here's another H bond interaction. So make sure you understand the difference. This here is not considered a hydrogen bond. That's a covalent bond. This here between the hydrogen of one molecule and the oxygen of another, that is a hydrogen bond. So because of this dimer that two carboxylic acid molecules can form, they have a relatively higher boiling point than alcohols, even though both of them have hydrogen bonds. So like alcohols, carboxylic acids, they have a high boiling point. For the most part, they're soluble in water. And they're also acidic as well. The pKa of a typical carboxylic acid is around 4 to 5. For an alcohol, the pKa could be anywhere from 15 to 18. Now esters, they look very similar to an alcohol, but instead of a hydroxyl group, you have like an alkoxy group here. So instead of OH, this would be OR. 
So esters do not have hydrogen bonds, like carboxylic acids. Therefore, they will have a lower boiling point compared to carboxylic acids. Now, esters are known for their pleasant odors. They're typically used in fragrances, perfumes, and other cosmetic products. Amines, on the other hand, amines tend to have a fishy order. So here's a typical amine, RNH2. This molecule, this is putrescine. It's a diamine and it has four carbon atoms. And this is responsible for the order that comes off of rotten fish. So when the amino acid arginine degrades, it can degrade into this molecule, putrescine. So this is a diamine with a fishy order. Now amines, they tend to have a relatively high boiling point like alcohols because they do have hydrogen bonds, particularly primary and secondary amines. Tertiary amines do not form hydrogen bonds because they don't have the hydrogen attached to the nitrogen. So tertiary amines, which look like this, they tend to have lower boiling points relative to primary amines. So the reason for the low boiling point is that they lack the hydrogen bonding that is found in primary and secondary amines. Amines like alcohols, they act as nucleophiles. But amines, they tend to be stronger bases than alcohols. Carboxylic acids, for the most part, are considered weak acids. But amines, when you see them in organic chemistry, they typically act as weak bases in their neutral form. Now, there are some other functional groups out there. And for those of you who want to know more about it, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. You can also go to YouTube and type in a search box, Unusual Functional Groups, Organic Chemistry Tutor, and you're going to get a list of a lot of functional groups that are out there. Now, there's one more functional group I want to go over. And this one is the thiol. Thiols, they look similar to alcohols. The alcohol functional group has the OH group. But instead of an oxygen, when dealing with thiols, it's replaced with another calcogen, sulfur. Both oxygen and sulfur, they're calcogens in group 6A of the periodic table. So they have a similar chemical reactivity. However, these two functional groups, they have vastly different properties. Alcohols, because of hydrogen bonding, have a much higher boiling point than thiols. But thiols, they have a very pungent odor. So when you think of a thiol, think of the smell of skunks. It, it's very powerful. I mean, you could pick up just the, the tiniest sense of a thiol. That's how strong it is. So that's basically it for this video. For those of you who want more content on functional groups, feel free to check out the links in the description section below.